Okay, so everyone listening has probably sat through one of those like long onboarding sessions, like the one that are just death by PowerPoint. Yeah. You know, and you leave just completely overwhelmed and you don't remember anything. Yeah. Totally. And those mandatory icebreakers are like the opposite of breaking the ice. Like who thought of I those? Know. I know. So anyway, we're going to deep dive today into a book by Sylvia Ola. It's called The Blind Leading the Disengaged. And uh, specifically, we're going to focus on chapter four, which is all about onboarding. Sylvia Ola throws out the like the old traditional onboarding playbook. Yeah, she does. And offers a really radical approach. So Ola starts off by kind of dissecting those like agonizing induction days. Yeah. She just goes right in and mm. describes it like information overload. Oh, yeah. The forced interactions, all of it. It's, it's like she was peeking into my past onboarding experiences, honestly. She was in my brain. Yeah. Yeah, it's most therapeutic, like, to have somebody acknowledge that sh shared pain. But Ola doesn't just, like, complain about it. She offers a solution, right? Right. She she flips the script. And she argues for shifting from mandatory attendance to mandatory competence. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, so, so instead of, you know, cramming all this information into new hires, she proposes giving them the resources to learn at their own pace. Okay, Alex. Yeah, and then testing their understanding after like a month. Okay, so it's like trusting that they're going to learn independently. Yeah. But also like setting clear expectations and holding them accountable. Exactly. I love that. Yeah. I think that's such a more respectful approach. Mm -hmm. Like it respects people's time, you know. Some people learn differently than others, so it kind of honors that. Absolutely. And and it also puts the onus on the company to make sure that they're providing good learning tools. Exactly. Right? Yeah. It's like you got to do your part if you expect people to, to learn this way. Yeah, and, and Ola actually takes it a step further by advocating for testing both explicit and tacit knowledge. Okay, hold on, wait. <sighs> Remind me, what's the difference? Okay, so explicit knowledge is like the what. It's like the facts, the figures, company history. So, like, knowing that the company was founded in, say, 1995. Got it. Tacit knowledge, on the other hand, is the how. It's more about the unwritten rules company culture, the way things actually get done. Okay. So, it's like knowing that the company was founded in 1995 is explicit. But tacit is knowing, like, the coffee machine etiquette. Like, who refills it, who cleans it. That unspoken dance of office life. Exactly. Those subtle cues. Mm -hmm. That can really make or break your experience in a new workplace. Oh, yeah. And Ola argues that you need both types of knowledge to be successful. So basically, ditch the day-long PowerPoint marathon, replace it with a month of like self-directed learning, and then at the end of the month have assessments that test both explicit and tacit knowledge. That's Ola's recipe for a more effective onboarding experience. Exactly. It's about shifting the focus from just being present to yeah. actually demonstrating understanding and competence. I like it. I like it a lot. Well, but what happens like if somebody doesn't get it after three tries? Yeah. You know, are they are they shown the door? It's not quite that cutthroat. Okay. But but Ola does suggest that it might be a sign of a mismatch, mm. either you know in terms of the individual's learning style, or maybe their overall fit with the company culture. Okay. So it's more like an opportunity to, you know, reevaluate, and maybe redirect the new hire to a role. Or an environment that's a better fit for their strengths. I see. So it's not about punishing failure. It's more about making sure it's the right fit, both for the individual and for the organization. Exactly. Okay. This is making me rethink like everything I thought I knew about onboarding. That's the power of Ola's approach. It challenges the status quo and it forces us to question those assumptions that we often just take for granted. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so this is all sounding really promising, but I do have some questions like, what about probation periods? Ah, yes. Probation period purgatory, as Ola calls it. I like that. It's that in-between state where you're technically part of the company, Yeah. but you just constantly feel like you're being judged. I worked at a company once where probation felt like a never-ending test. You're just waiting for the other shoe to drop. Mm -hmm. I hated it. Yeah. So this idea of focusing on support instead of scrutiny that's really refreshing. Yeah, and, and Ola actually uses a pretty compelling example to challenge this whole idea of needing a probation period. She talks about Netflix. Wait, Netflix got rid of probation periods? It did. Tell me more. So their internal data showed that only a tiny fraction of employees, like two out of 10,000, failed to pass probation each year. Wow. So they realized that the administrative burden and the potential negative impact on morale just wasn't worth it. I remember reading that and I literally gasped. <laughs> it's like such a bold move. It really makes you question the value of these like 
arbitrary probationary period. Right. And what Netflix realized ah. is that trust and a strong onboarding experience were way more effective than this system. That's designed to weed out potential bad apples. Yeah. It makes you wonder if companies like Netflix can operate without probation periods, why are so many others still clinging to them? That is the million dollar question. And, and Ola argues that probation often stems from a lack of trust and a fear of making the wrong hiring decision. Makes sense. But by shifting our mindset, you know, from fear to empowerment, we can potentially create a much more positive and productive onboarding experience. Exactly. And Ola believes that this shift requires a fundamental change in how we think about the role of managers in the onboarding process. Yes, I completely agree. Managers are like the front line of the employee experience. They set the tone, they shape the culture, and they ultimately determine whether a new hire feels welcome and supported. Ola couldn't agree more. In fact, she calls away a lot of organizations on board managers a joke. I can see that. <laughs> yeah, she paints this hilarious picture of VPs attending the same generic onboarding sessions as everyone else, yeah. as if sitting through a PowerPoint presentation is a genuine demonstration of company culture. I've seen that. It's so cringy. It's like, welcome to our company. Here's a stack of forms and a PowerPoint about our mission statement. Yeah. Now go forth and be amazing. Exactly. It's so superficial. And Ola emphasizes that managers and leaders need a totally different onboarding experience, one that equips them with the specific skills and knowledge they need to lead effectively. Okay, so let's unpack that. Yeah. What does Ola envision for a truly effective manager onboarding experience? She outlines a pretty comprehensive agenda that covers everything from understanding the employee life cycle to mastering crucial skills like giving feedback, managing performance, and building a strong team culture. That makes so much sense. Managers aren't just responsible for tasks, they're responsible for people. Exactly. And that requires a whole different set of skills and sensibilities. Absolutely. And Ola argues that inadequate manager onboarding can have these ripple effects throughout the entire organization. Oh, yeah, for sure. You know, it can impact team performance morale, even lead to higher turnover rates. Yeah, I can totally see that. So investing in manager onboarding mm -hmm. isn't just about developing individual leaders. It's about creating a better experience for everybody. It's about fostering a culture where people feel supported and valued and empowered to do their best work. Exactly. And all of this, Ola argues, ties back to this broader concept of employee experience. She breaks it down into seven pillars. Attract, hire, onboard, motivate, perform, develop, and exit. And she emphasizes the importance of viewing each stage through the lens of how you want employees to feel. This is so true. It's not just about what you do, it's about how you make people feel. Exactly, and within each pillar, she asked some really thought-provoking questions, like do you have a digital onboarding tool, a structured onboarding plan, regular check-in conversations? How do you measure the new joiner experience? These aren't just theoretical questions, are they? Not at all. These are designed to get you thinking about your organization's practices. Exactly. This is where those aha moments start to happen, right? Like when you start connecting these concepts to your own workplace yeah. and realizing that maybe there's room for improvement. Precisely. And Ola doesn't just leave us with questions. She provides practical guidance on how to actually design and implement these changes. Okay, so let's get into it. What does Ola recommend? for organizations that are looking to revamp their onboarding approach. She outlines a framework for designing employee experiences that put people at the forefront. It's about moving beyond checklists and paperwork and creating an experience that makes new hires feel genuinely welcomed and valued from day one. And this all comes back to those potential outcomes we were talking about earlier, right? Reduced turnover, faster integration of new hires. Yeah and a more engaged and productive workforce. Exactly, and those outcomes aren't just good for employees, they're good for the bottom line. Ola makes a strong business case for investing in a thoughtful and well-designed onboarding process. So it's not just about being nice to employees, it's about creating a win-win situation where everyone benefits. Exactly, and that's what makes Ola's approach so compelling. It's grounded in both empathy and pragmatism. I like it, I like it a lot. This whole idea of centering the employee experience is so powerful. It really like flips the script on how we traditionally think about onboarding. It really does. And, and you know, speaking of flipping the script, let's circle back to this idea of probation periods, or as Ula calls it, probation period purgatory. Oh, yeah. I'm ready to banish probation to the shadow realm. <laughs> it always felt like this constant test, like a looming threat in the background. Right. Ola argues that probation is often rooted in a lack of trust, almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy. 
where companies expect new hires to fail, so they create a system designed to catch them doing just that. That's so counterproductive. You're setting people up for failure instead of success. Exactly. And and what's fascinating is that Ola doesn't just critique probation. She offers an alternative. She points to companies like Netflix who've ditched probation altogether and opted for a more trust-based approach. I know we talked about Netflix earlier, but I'm still blown away by their decision to scrap probation. What was their rationale again? Well, Netflix realized that their probationary system was more of a hassle than a help. Their data show that only a tiny percentage of employees actually failed probation. So it just wasn't worth the administrative burden and the negative impact it had on employee morale. That's such a powerful statement about trust. Instead of micromanaging and scrutinizing new hires, they decided to invest in creating a supportive environment where people could thrive. It's a radical idea, but it seems to be working for them. They've built a reputation for attracting and retaining top talent and their culture is widely admired. Yeah, it really makes you wonder if probation is more about control than about performance. Like, are we really trying to weed out bad hires or are we just trying to assert our authority? That's a really good question. Ola suggests that if we're truly committed to creating a positive and productive work environment, we need to move away from this adversarial mindset. We need to shift our focus from evaluation to empowerment. Okay, so let's say we're ready to embrace this more empowering approach. What did that look like in practice? How do we onboard people effectively without relying on probation as a safety net? Well, Ola argues that the key is to create a robust onboarding experience that sets clear expectations from the start, provides ongoing support and feedback, and fosters a culture of open communication. So it's about giving people the tools and resources they need to succeed, not just throwing them in the deep end and hoping they'll figure it out. Exactly. And Ola believes that managers play a crucial role in this process. They're the ones who set the tone, create the environment, and ultimately determine whether a new hire feels welcomed and supported. This brings us back to that point about the importance of manager onboarding. You can't expect managers to be effective onboarding champions if they haven't been properly equipped themselves. Ola is adamant about this. She's hilariously critical of companies that try to showcase their culture by making VPs attend the same generic onboarding sessions as everyone else, as if enduring a PowerPoint presentation together is some kind of bonding ritual. Oh, I've been there. It's like, here's yeah. our company's 10-year plan and a photo of our CEO's dog. Now go forth and embody our values. Exactly. It's so superficial. Ola argues that managers need a completely different onboarding experience, one that's tailored to the specific skills and knowledge they need to lead effectively. So instead of subjecting them to death by PowerPoint, what does Ola propose? She outlines a pretty comprehensive agenda that covers a wide range of topics, from understanding the employee life cycle to mastering crucial skills, like giving feedback, managing performance, and building a strong team culture. This makes so much sense when you think about it. Managers are responsible for so much more than just assigning tasks. They're shaping people's experiences, impacting their careers, and ultimately influencing the overall culture of the organization. Precisely. And, and Ola argues that inadequate manager onboarding can have a ripple effect throughout the entire organization, impacting team performance morale, even leading to higher turnover rates. So investing in manager onboarding isn't just about developing individual leaders. It's about creating a better experience for everyone. It's about fostering a culture where people feel supported, valued, and empowered to do their best work. Exactly. And that brings us to Ola's broader concept of employee experience, which she breaks down into seven pillars, attract, hire, onboard, motivate, perform, develop, and exit. And she encourages companies to view each stage through the lens of how they want employees to feel. This is so simple, but it's such a profound shift in perspective. It's not just about what you do to employees. It's about how you make them feel. And those feelings have a direct impact on engagement productivity and ultimately the success of the organization. This is where those aha moments start to happen, right? You start connecting these concepts to your own workplace mm. and realizing that maybe, just maybe, there's room for improvement. Exactly. And what's great is that Ola doesn't just leave us with theories and concepts. She provides practical guidance on how to actually design and implement these changes. Okay, so let's dig into those practical steps. What does Ola recommend for organizations looking to revamp their onboarding approach? specifically within that crucial onboard pillar. She starts by asking a very simple but powerful question. How do you want employees to feel about you during the onboarding process? It's such a thought-provoking question because it forces you to consider the emotional impact 
of your onboarding program. You know, I've never actually been asked that question in any onboarding experience I've ever had. It's eye-opening, isn't it? And then she delves into more specific questions, like, did you feel welcomed by your team? Did you receive adequate training? Were your expectations clearly communicated? Those are great questions. They're focused and actionable. Yeah. And they really get to the heart of what matters most to new hires. Exactly. And Ola emphasizes the importance of tracking this data over time. This allows organizations to identify trends, pinpoint areas for improvement, and ultimately ensure that their onboarding program is consistently delivering a positive experience. It's like taking the pulse of your onboarding process right, making sure it's healthy and adapting to the needs of your new hires. Exactly. And that ties back to Ola's core message. Onboarding isn't a one-time event. It's an ongoing process by continuously seeking feedback and making adjustments. Organizations can create an onboarding experience that truly sets new hires up for success. It's about creating a culture of continuous improvement, not just checking off a box and moving on. Precisely. And I think that's a really powerful takeaway for anyone involved in talent management, from HR professionals to senior leaders. So speaking of ripple effects, Ola shared a personal anecdote in the book about implementing a structured onboarding process for a team of 700 employees. Oh, yes. She went above and beyond sending welcome emails and detailed training plans to new hires a week before they even started. That's such a smart move. It helps build excitement and anticipation, and it shows that the company is invested in their success from day one. Exactly, and the results speak for themselves. Those departments that followed her structured onboarding plan had significantly lower turnover rates and faster integration rates compared to those that didn't. That's incredible. It really shows that investing in a thoughtful and well-designed onboarding process can have a real impact on employee engagement and retention. Ola's key message is that creating positive employee experiences doesn't have to be complicated. It's about paying attention to the details, setting up the right structures, yeah. and putting people at the center of your design. It's about moving beyond the checklists and the paperwork and creating an onboarding experience that makes new hires feel genuinely welcomed valued and excited to be part of the team. Precisely. And ultimately, that's what it's all about, right? Yeah. Creating an environment where everyone feels supported, valued, and empowered to do their best work. Wow. It's amazing how much we've unpacked about onboarding just from this one chapter. Mm. It's like, I never realized how much we just take for granted about this process. Yeah. It can be easy to overlook, but Ola's insights really show how important it is to get it right. For sure. So as we wrap up this deep dive into her ideas, I'm curious to hear more about measuring the new joiner experience. Like, how do we go beyond just assuming things are working well? Well, Ola is all about data-driven decision-making, even when it comes to onboarding. So she advocates for using surveys to get feedback from new hires. Yeah, but surveys can be tricky. I've taken so many that feels super generic, like they don't really dig into the actual experience. Right, and Ola addresses that. She's very specific about asking the right questions. You know, he questions that go beyond just, was your onboarding experience good or bad? Okay, so give me an example. Like, what kind of questions should we be asking? Well, she suggests questions that focus on specific aspects of onboarding. Like, did you feel welcomed by your team? Did you receive enough training? Were your expectations clearly communicated? Those are good questions. They're really getting to the heart of what matters. Exactly. And she also emphasizes the importance of tracking this data over time. So you can identify trends and pinpoint areas for improvement and ultimately make sure your onboarding program is delivering a positive experience. It's like taking the pulse of your onboarding process making sure it's healthy and adapting as needed. Exactly. And that ties back to Ola's core message that onboarding isn't a one-time event. It's an ongoing process. It's about continuous improvement, right? Exactly. Always seeking feedback and making adjustments so you can create an onboarding experience that truly sets new hires up for success. That's so important. And I think it's a powerful takeaway for anyone involved in talent management. Absolutely. From HR to team leaders, everyone has a role to play. Well, we've covered a lot of ground today. And I want to leave you, the listener, with one final thought. Could a really engaging and well-designed onboarding process be the key to unlocking higher levels of employee engagement and retention across the entire organization? It's definitely something worth thinking about. And I encourage everyone to check out Sylvia Ola's book, the Blind Leading the Disengaged for more great insights. This deep dive has been so eye-opening for me. I know I'm walking away with a whole new perspective on onboarding and its power to shape the employee experience. I agree. It's been a pleasure exploring these ideas with you. And thank you to everyone listening for joining us on this deep dive. We hope it's given you some new ideas and inspiration. To rethink your own approach to onboarding, 
Remember, creating a positive and engaging onboarding experience is an investment in your people, your culture, and ultimately the success of your organization